This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 54. Stories. Earlier, Caden stood by the window of Wally's shop, watching the crowds mill around the square after Dragon Queen May's procession had passed. He hadn't been able to see her and had only glimpsed the mechanical soldiers. The claw had arranged for there to be a snaking clear area through the square center where the crowd had pressed all around it, including against the shop's windows. Yet Caden had felt her. He'd been folding t-shirts with Valerius's precious face upon them, as there were no customers in the store during the parade, a calm before the storm in a way, and manfully resisting not rubbing his cheek against the face, when the hair on the back of his neck stood on end. He dropped the t-shirt and turned towards the shop windows as if in a trance. All he could see were the butts and backs of the viewers, but he slowly stepped towards the glass until his nose was practically pressed against it. Caden? Rose was suddenly beside him. What are you doing? Don't attract those people in here. I'm just catching my breath. It's May, Caden said softly. Rose looked outside, clearly saw only the press of butts, and turned back to him with a frown. How do you know? The television will give you a better view, Wally called. Their boss was sitting in Landry's usual stool. He had the television above the cash register that usually showed specials, now had on one of the cable news networks. It showed the parade. It actually showed the outside of the shop, practically. And right now, May was standing in the middle of the square. A dozen of the faithful were approaching her in their white robes. Each of them were carrying peonies. His mother was out there. His mother had explained that peonies in Chinese culture represented nobility, wealth, honor, feminine beauty, innocence, and charm. On the television, the head of the faith was bowing as he offered the armful of delicate flowers to May, who was all smiles and graciousness. She accepted the flowers and held them to her breast for a moment, drawing in their deep scent, before she handed them to one of her soldiers. The soldier tossed each of the blooms into the air so that when they came down, they were easily caught by children in the crowd. There were cries of joy and claps of amazement. She certainly knows how to work a crowd, Wally admitted reluctantly. Caden turned back towards the window. Iolaire's ears were flickering. The spirit wasn't afraid of May, but Iolaire wasn't as excited as it had been meeting Tez or Esme. Iolaire's reaction to Alarian had been less intense. What's wrong, Caden? Rose put her hand on his right arm. Iolaire's reaction to May, Caden admitted. How? Rose frowned. Freaked out? No, just wary. Iolaire is sort of sitting back, tail curled around its feet, and he saw Rose staring at him like he was insane. What? You see your spirit? That's still so weird to me, Rose said with a shake of her head. That's weird. He was a little hurt. She thumped his back. Yes, but cool. I guess it's just another dragon shifter thing. May does not seem to be aware of you, Caden, thankfully. Wally said as he gestured to May's procession moving on, though at the last moment she turned her head and seemed to look directly into the camera and at him, but then she was smiling and continuing on. What do you know about May, Wally? Caden asked as he turned away from the milling crowd. They'd be in there any second to shop, and then talking about anything, let alone May, would be off the table. Their parents hadn't agreed to let Tilly come and work in the shop because of her punishment, even when both he and his sister had pleaded. With Landry behind bars, they were short a hand, and they couldn't ask Marbon to continue to work the shop. He was a little more important than that. Plus, with the dragons coming, not to mention Iolaire, business was brisker than ever. Caden rather thought that his pleas had actually made his parents less agreeable to letting Tilly go. Neither of his parents were really speaking to him at the moment. His father was shut up in his study and his mother had answered him with one word responses as she made breakfast for everyone except him. They can't stay mad forever, he grimaced. But they are likely expecting an apology from me, which I can give as to how I said what I said, but not all of what I said. 
So things are going to be a little frosty for a while. You think I know secrets about Queen Bay? Wally chuckled, turning around on his stool and pulling Caden from his gloomy thoughts. Something tells me from that chuckle that you do, Rose pointed out with a raised eyebrow. Wally reached for the black dragon balloon hat and both Caden and Rose exchanged a look. Wally plonked it on his head with much squeaking. What's with the hat, Wally? Rose's eyebrows rose higher. It is the wisdom hat, Wally harumphed, clearly aware that she was about to attack his dignity in some way. It's a balloon wisdom hat, Wally interrupted with a monumental clearing of his throat. In any case, do you want to hear what I know or don't you? We want to know, Wally, and quickly, the crowd is getting restless out there. There aren't many more of the mechanical soldiers to watch. Caden pointed over his shoulder at the door. I know what makes her tick, Wally told them. Really? Rose's arms crossed over her chest. She looked as much amused as dubious. Do you know her personally? No, but I know how she got her spirit, Wally said, a superior smile on his face as he tipped his head back. The balloon hat fell off and he nearly toppled from the stool trying to reach it. Both Caden and Rose grinned at each other, but they quickly hit those grins when Wally scowled at them as he put the hat on again. Go on, Wally, Caden urged. Now, how a person gets their spirit says a lot about them, Wally explained. Really? Rose sounded wry, because it seems the type of shifter you are means more to most people. Wally waved a hand through the air. That's prejudice, pure and simple. I'm betting how you got your spirit was in some heroic way. Rose's eyes widened. Caden smiled. It was, he said. Wally nodded. Not surprised. But... Okay, so it was a little heroic, but I'm a swarm shifter, she cried, as if betrayed by the act. Being a swarm shifter doesn't make you bad, Rose. It is how you use your gift, Wally said gently. You know this. Yeah, but she shook herself. Go on with May's story. She was the daughter of the equivalent of a mayor in her village. Her father was wise and kind. He took care of his people and was known as someone who would give second chances, Wally explained. Sounds like a great guy, Kin said. Yes, and May loved him more than life. Wally looked as if he were seeing this past. So he died. Terribly, someone betrayed him, Rose guessed. Rose! Kane waved at her, but Wally smiled sadly. Yes, of course they did. Bandits, a rival for the leader of the village. Rose guessed some more. Can you let him tell the story, Rose? Caden asked. She sniffed. Fine, but I bet I can guess it was May's fiance, Wally interrupted. Rose's mouth opened and shut a few times. That's, that's awful. Was she as trusting as her father then? Wally shook his head. In fact, she was suspicious and constantly looking out for her father, not wanting his kindness to be taken advantage of. But in this case, she was the one to trust, while her father was not so sure. Rose's eyes narrowed. Why does this sound like the typical story of a woman who falls for a bad man and ignores all common sense and he saved May's life in the woods around their village? She was a skilled warrior in her own right. Her ability with the bow and sword was nearly unparalleled, Wally said. But she was only human and a dozen bandits are formidable. Just as she was about to fall, her later fiancé killed her final attackers. Sounds useful, Rose shrugged. I'm going to make a guess here, Caden said. Those were the fiancé's men, weren't they? Wally touched the side of his nose. Right you are, kid. He saw her, and maybe it was love or lust on first sight. But he recognized in May someone far more worthy to align himself with than the bandits. Why would she trust someone who kills his own men? Rose scoffed. He hadn't been with his men when they attacked. He came in after and pretended, I suppose, to be a wandering traveler, Wally explained, mirroring her earlier shrug. Whatever his story, she believed him. And I imagine he was convincing and earned her love and respect, which could not have been an easy thing to do. She brought him back to the village and convinced her father to put him in charge of security with her. And her father sent something off about him? Rose asked, clearly getting involved in the story more than she wanted to let on. 
Wally nodded. He did not believe in coincidences. He might believe in treating people well, well, more often than not, make them respond in kind. Rose glanced at Caden then. When he smiled at her, not sure what she was thinking, she quickly turned away. But that this young man would appear at just the right moment to save his daughter, that had him suspicious. Wally looked grim. But he offered his hospitality and kept his suspicions to himself because he saw that May was already smitten. Smitten? Rose squawked. When Wally looked at her curiously, she explained, If May was a man, would you say smitten? That woman, she pointed to the television screen where May glided up to high reach, has never been smitten a day in her life. She would have to be a totally different person. And if there's one thing that you and I know, Wally, is that shifters don't really change. Their personalities don't alter. Wally actually smiled and nodded. Just let me finish my story. And then, well, let me finish. She let out a breath that had her bangs flying up. Go on then. Dumb girl is smitten with charmingly sly bandit who is eyeing her village for his own. The bandit thought that the moment he and May married, the father would see control of the village over to him. But the old man guessed this and called the bandit to his rooms one night, Wally continued. At this meeting, he told the bandit in no uncertain terms that he was not giving control of the village to him. Not now, not ever. Yeah, but if it was going to go to May, I'm betting this bandit guy thought he could just take control through her. Caden frowned deeply. Oh, yes. If he had said that, then I'm sure the bandit would have assumed just that. Wally adjusted the wisdom hat. So he wasn't going to pass the leadership on to May because she was a girl. He must not have intended to give it to her at all. Rose was scowling. Maybe so, maybe not. But he told the bandit that she would not take his place either. So if he was there for anything other than love of a wonderful skilled woman, then he should leave. The skin between Caden's shoulder blades bunched. He could almost feel the blade that was undoubtedly going to be thrust into May's father, either figuratively or metaphorically. So, what did he do? Caden asked, sounding a little breathless with anticipation and dread. The bandit assured May's father that love was all that motivated him. He bowed and left. Everything seemed quite normal and happy. He was more attentive to May than ever and treated the father with respect. Wally chewed his inner cheek. The wedding took place with great splendor. People from all over came with gifts for the young couple. It was during the wedding feast when the tragedy occurred. What happened? Caden asked. Bandits, Rose hissed, eyes narrowing. Wally gave one sharp nod. Husband and wife fought valiantly. They saved so many people, but one. May's father? Oh no! She must have been beside herself with grief. Caden's heart ached. He tried to imagine his parents being killed, and it was enough to make his heart clench. To find out that it was the person he had loved and trusted behind it? Well, it would be too much. When did she figure out it was her husband's bandits and her husband's order that took her father's life? Rose asked, looking a little pale herself. Right away. She saw him speaking to one of the bandits just before they managed to get away. You see, this time, he wasn't going to kill all of his men just enough. Wally said the words as if they tasted bitter. But May had started to get suspicious. I'd went after that bandit and made him tell her the truth about the man she thought she loved. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Now, you can tell I love shifters, and Dragon's Reign was the first serial I had a whole world of them, all different types. But I've also done the more traditional shifter tales involving werewolves, and one of those is a modern gay retelling of Little Red Riding Hood in my serial, Crimson. In Crimson, a lonely young man, find lo a lonely young man finds love in a werewolf pack. Gareth, alpha of the Cold Moon Pack, does not believe in mates. His friend went mad after his mate was killed, so Gareth resists love. But then he meets Jude Connor. Growing up an orphan, Jude experienced human cruelty and trusts no one. Still, he dreams of belonging to someone and being part of a family. Can he bring himself to trust Gareth and the Cold Moon Pack and make that dream a reality? 
If you'd like to check out the first few chapters of Crimson for free, the link is down in the description below. Again, I just don't see May valuing goodness and wisdom in a mate. Rose's hands flew up in the air like startled birds. Wally patted the air between them with one pudgy hand and the wisdom hat with the other. Regardless of what she valued, she returned to the village to find her father dead and with the knowledge that her husband was the one responsible for it. Wally's voice deepened. They say she let out a scream that cracked open the sky. Red lightning that rained down and destroyed the roof of the wedding hall where she cradled her dead father's head in her hands. The joining? Kane's eyes grew wide. Wally nodded. She is said to have transformed into the red dragon right there and then. Her husband, she roasted alive. And then she is said to have flown up and gone after the rest of his men, burning them to ashes in her magma-like breath. When she returned to the village, after scouring the area of all evildoers, she took over running it. She was their protector and savior for many, many centuries. The moment that Wally finished his story, silence fell as both Caden and Rose absorbed it. The story in Caden's mind made May seem likable. She had been betrayed by the one person she loved most, so maybe that explained her need to build mechanical armies to protect her and her people. She likely didn't trust anyone after that. Caden felt sympathy for her, and he looked curiously at Ayalair. Why don't you like her? Caden asked the spirit. But Ayalair didn't get a chance to answer as Rose shouted, Bullshit! I call bullshit, Wally! Instead of acting offended, Wally's round face split into a huge grin. His mustache was quivering with affection and pride. Caden frowned. What did he miss here? Wally, that story, it's true, right? I mean, it sounds true, Caden said almost meekly as Rose was shaking her head. It sounds like a story, Caden. Too neat and clean, and I'm betting your little heart was thumping in sympathy for her. Rose lifted her eyebrows at him. He actually blushed and lowered his head. Well, yeah. His head, though, shot up again. But wouldn't. You'd have to be cold-hearted not to understand what something like that could do to a person, and do you really think that woman that freaks Iolair out is this feel-good village daughter who avenged her father and was a wise and just ruler ever after? Rose shook her head as if he was simply too naive. Uh, I don't know. She could be. Caden looked at Wally for support. Wally, you told this to explain May and the story I told you is the one that May wishes to be known. Wally interrupted. May wants? She doesn't speak of it herself, obviously, but the story just slipped out to the press, Wally explained. Caden scowled. You said you had secret knowledge, something in the paper. Considering it was made of dead trees at the time and now is like a microfiche, that is the equivalent of secret knowledge to you youngsters. Wally corrected him, waving a chubby sausage finger through the air. So the whole story is a, a lie? Caden cried, feeling betrayed somehow. Iolair was licking its claws and cleaning its head with them cat-like. Don't you be acting like I'm naive too, Iolair, Caden cried. All he got was slow blinks of love from Iolair before the dragon went back to cleaning itself. But Wally shook his head. Oh, yes. But there are some definite changes to it. Like what? Caden's eyes narrowed. He wasn't sure he trusted Wally not to lead him astray again. The village mayor had only one child, Wally said. Yes, May, we know. But Wally shook his head, cutting Caden off. No, he had a son. Oh, my God. Rose put a hand up to her lips. May was the bandit. Wally grinned and pointed at her. You win a prize of knowledge, Rose. Perhaps you would like to wear the wisdom hat? Rose was immediately backing away and was waving a hand as if to ward off the dragon balloon hat. So did her husband find out who she was and what she had done? Caden was stunned. I do not know that she ever actually married him. But he did supposedly love her. I know that she slaughtered everyone that stood in her way, Wally remarked dryly. Does Valerius know the true story? The Dragon King had told him that dragon shifters did not get their spirits by doing good and noble acts, so he undoubtedly knew that May wasn't some orphan girl who had taken her revenge. But still, I imagine he is not blind to her nature, Wally said. He's a wise, if gruff person, our King Valerius. But those soldiers, Caden shook his head in dissatisfaction. 
May gets her way through subterfuge. Those soldiers are like that wooden horse story. Valerius isn't foolish, Caden. If he's let her bring them in, he's done it for a purpose, Rose assured him. Indeed, Caden. Do not worry, Wally told him. But Caden couldn't help but worry. He pulled up the phone to call Valerius, but people flooded into the store. You had only a moment to text a call me to Valerius before the store was overwhelmed with people clamoring for red dragon plushies. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. Just a reminder that if you join Wraith Rain as a member, the membership is 15 to 20 episodes ahead of the free podcast. If you'd like to join and listen to all those extra podcasts, not to mention getting access to the other stories and manga on Wraith Rain, a link is down below.